Okay, there's no point of beating around the bush, okay? Rodna's life sucks major ass, and I cannot emphasize it enough. It is really ridiculous how much his life sucks. I mean, okay, let's see here. Let's, let's start with all the reasons why Rodna's life sucks so damn hard in the grand scheme of things, and it, I, ha I have to talk about it. it, it I, I just have to. Let's start off with number one. Rodna was an orphan who lost his family due to Tyranny's machinations. Rodna himself is basically, well, Rodna, Jin, and Sire were basically artificial humans because, oh, oh my god, how am I supposed to explain this? I can't explain it. Let me let me give me a second. So Rodna, Jin, and Sire's mom is the fifth prime field device, and she was implied to be cloned from Sire Tyranny. AKA Naoto Kurogane's sister. So yeah, not only do they have a clone mom from someone from an alternate universe, she is also the fifth prime field device who had them. And on top of that, she, you know, Relius has something to do with it because he it's Relius, he always does. He always has something to do with it. On top of Rodna being, well, now orphan because the, because the fifth prime field device is either missing or dead, most likely dead. So, yeah, uh, yeah, Rodney got to deal with that, and on top of that, you know, Teremi shows up, loses his sister, loses his brother, loses his freaking arm, and, yeah, it, it doesn't, it, it, honestly, it never even started good for Rodney. Speaking of Rodney's arm, uh, yeah, uh, had, he had that arm replaced with the Azure Grimoire, basically a baby black beast. Well, actually, that's not, that's a lie, but still. Anyway, but the point is, when his armor was replaced by the Azure, not only it saved his life, but it's currently killing him. And, well, not currently now, but anyway, it was killing him. And, you know, it can also potentially turn into the Black Beast. So, you know, the Black Beast that's literally outside of logic itself and has to be killed by specific types of weapons in order to make sure it's put down for good. And even after that, the Black Beast could never be killed because it had to be, there's like pieces of it flowing around the world. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta deal with that too. So, yeah, there's, there's also a problem of Rodna becoming a Black Beast, having to deal with an arm that's killing him, and on top of that, he has to rip out people's souls, which, actually, he really doesn't do much of that anymore, but still, like, <laughs> yeah, I gotta deal with the Azure, because it's killing him. Isn't that, is, that, that? That's just, that's just great to deal with. So basically, Rodna later became an SS-class criminal, and on top of that, he's pretty much gained the hatred of nearly the entire world, and even has the highest bounty on his, succeeding Kokonoe, who was the former SS-class criminal who basically wiped out her um, records to make sure, you know, she wasn't the original SS-class criminal. And on top of that, he's always constantly hounded for either his high bounty, the Azure, or pretty much people out to kill him. I mean, it's, it's hard to go to a massive list about the people who have it out for Ragna. You got Jen, his nuts brother, who really just wants to kill him and, you know, harbor some messed up incest feelings that still borders on his madness. Then you got Noel, who doesn't even know what's going on, his clone sister on top of that, and the fact that it's, 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 it, it, it doesn't get any better for him. It actually, it, nearly every character has something out for Ragna, and it's just sad. It's just sad to think about. Like, I gotta, I gotta go through this in order. Let me let me just give me a second. I gotta go through this in order just to emphasize how bad this is. So starting with Jin, as I said before, yeah, Jin's nuts. He is completely nuts and crazy, and you know, incest. And I mean, I know Jin's like you know, crazy. It's just that it's, it's, he has, Rodney has to constantly deal with his younger brother always trying to kill him because of many many reasons. Noel. She's, well, I guess you could say Noel's also crazy, but I mean, Rodney has his own complicated history with Noel, considering the fact that A, she's a clone of his sister, B, Noel is not even right in the head to begin with, and C, she was always working with the NOL who already had an out for Rodney to begin with. Yeah, nothing worse to have with her. Then you got Rachel, who's arguably, well, right, Rachel's almost one, at least one of the helpful people, although. You guys, he has to constantly deal with her tsundere attitude and her constant insults. And on top of that, she really doesn't explain anything to him. Like, she pretty much just, like, she's very cryptic about what she explains to Ragna. And she's pretty much like, yeah, you know, Ragna, you know, you could do this. 
But no, no, wait. How she go? She always, she's always cryptic about it. She never ex outright explains what she's trying to tell him. And Rodney's like, well, what the hell? Can you just tell me instead of just going over my head with the stuff? And no, Rachel hardly ever does, unless actually she hardly ever does. Now think about it. Tao, who's literally like the only per one of the very few people who doesn't give Rodney crap. And actually likes him as a person more than, you know, anything else. But on top of that, he has to deal with her stupidity. And I mean, I guess that's someone he has to deal with. I mean, shoot, everybody else treats him like crap and how and thinks he's stupid. So I guess someone literally stupider than Ragnar has to, you know, has a good way to bounce off of. Tager already has it out for Ragnar, but that's mostly due to Kokonoe. And Tager just doesn't really like Ragnar all that much. He really doesn't. Lychee, you know, Azure stuff. Arachne, the Azure. Bang, because you know Bang's the he Bang's the hero. He has to defeat Ragnar. Ragnar's evil, you know, right? You know, Ragnar's the evil. Carl, mainly because of the Azure. Hawkman, because Hawkman just he hates Ragnar in general. I mean, that stems from well. To be fair, you know, Hawkman's just like, oh yeah, well, it's a dark one. I know Ragnar just doesn't like Ragnar either, but you know, dark one rules. New, new is nuts. Okay, new is crazy. Yandere, uh, just no. Like, it's like, oh, I love you, Rod. But no, yeah, but you love him. It's not the love he wants. And, you know, Lambda. Lambda is also one of the very few people who actually is nice to Ragna. And she actually likes Ragna unconditionally. And I like that. I mean, I mean, there's like only three people in the series that don't like, don't give Ragna crap in some form or another. And that's Selica, Lambda, and Tao. But I'll get to, I'll get to Selica in a minute. Subaki, yeah, I mean, Subaki just hates Ragna in general. Like, she just, she hates him. Hazma, do I really need to explain it? Hazma is tearing me. Do I really have to explain those two? I guess Mu doesn't count because she's Noel. Makoto actually, hmm. You know, matter of fact, I don't really think of Makoto actually has anything out for Ragna, to be honest. She really doesn't. She really doesn't interact with Ragna enough. And the only few times I actually remember them interacting was in Central Fiction and. That was also because of the whole embryo situation, so, you know. Valkenheim doesn't like Ragna. Platinum definitely doesn't like Ragna. And there's Jubei clauses, too. Relius, Relius actually just, well, it's hard to explain Relius. I mean, Relius, you can, you can say Relius looks like everyone just because he sees them as tools more than actual people. Izioi is Tsubaki, don't have to explain that. Amane, actually, Amane doesn't even treat Ragna with crap. He actually, like, you know, Observer rules. Amani doesn't really treat Rodney right crap. And those two actually, you know, can have a chill conversation. Funny, speaking of chill conversations, Bang uh, becomes chill with Ragna around Chrome Phantasma. So I can't count Bang as, you know, hating Ragna. That was just like more CT and CS. Bullet. Huh. Wait, do I remember why Bullet hates Ragna? Or is, does she hate him? Was it for the bounty? No, it wasn't for the bounty. She actually, she had, no. I don't remember why Bullet. Damn it. I don't remember Bullet. <laughs> I don't remember Bullet. Damn it. She's just like, she's just like in the background so badly. Asriel, yeah, strong opponents. Kagura. Kagura doesn't actually treat, like, he, he's there. He comes to respect Ragnar, but it doesn't start off that way, you know? I mean, it takes some time. And he does beat Ragnar's ass near the beginning of Chrome Phantasma just because Ragnar can't use his Azure. So, yeah, I gotta deal with that. Kokonoe. Uh, she, she doesn't hate Ragnar. Or having anything out for him, she's just—I mean, he need—he she—he—he's needed for some of her plans, so there has to be some kind of mutual understanding. Like, not really. <laughs> Terry, don't have to explain him. Salka, Salka, literally is one of the also one of the very few people that she treats Ragnar nice. She likes him. She treats him nice. She's always by. She she, she just cares for the guy like without, without any BS behind it. I can't say about I can say about a towel too, but he has to deal. With, Rodney has to deal with her stupidity, and the crap he gets her. Uh, he, she uh, the crap that she gets him into. How however minor. Then you got Lambda clone, and you know on top of it, he had to watch her die. Well, oh, then again, he watched Selica die. Damn it, I'm just rambling her. Then, okay, anyway, Selica, she's safe. Selica's safe. He be a key, doesn't really interact with Ragnar. Now has his own issues with Ragnar, considering the fact that he's pretty much his uncle from an alternate dimension ish place. Nine does really have it out for Ragnar, but those two, those two are more understanding to each other than you think 
because they're they're pretty much like two sides of the same coin, really. I mean, they both had crap to go on in their lives, and they both had to basically die for it, and it sucks. Izanami, Saya, and that's like that's extremely complicated. S, my ass, Susano, it don't matter. No, it doesn't even matter. All I'm saying is that there's very people people that actually treat Ragnar nice. Speaking of people treating Ragnar nice, pretty much he is treated. He at, well, most of the series. Well, not, I, say, I, say, I, say, I say, at least half of the series, or a quarter of it, I mean, no, 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 three-fourths of it, he's pretty much treated like a loser, he's treated that he, he's treated badly, like, he's treated like he's garbage, he's treated like he's a loser, and he's treated like he doesn't know anything, partially because no one bothers to explain anything to him. Roger's not an idiot, he is not stupid at all. I mean, he's not bright, bright, but he is not a complete idiot how everyone treats him. Like, everybody treats like, people, like, not, like, they mostly treat him like garbage because, well, you don't know anything, Rodney. Well, they don't explain anything to him. Rachel being the case in point, or Kokonoe, because they always want to be cryptic and dance around the situation instead of actually telling Rodney. You know, I bet most of the stuff in Crump, um, Clammy Trigger and, um, Continuum Shift would have been avoided if Rachel just actually said the words to Rodney. She never explained. That the Az okay, let's say let's go with um, the whole confrontation with Hazama. She never explained why Ragna couldn't beat Terry. She just said, "Oh, you just can't do it." Until Ragna found himself, "Oh yeah, my Astro, I'm the one who created the Astro, and mine specifically stronger than yours." Rachel never explained it. Everybody just kept saying, "You can't beat him. You can't beat. You can't beat um, Terry. This is impossible, Ragna. You can't do it. Just don't even bother." And like nobody explained it. Why? Like, and then, like, then you got, like, well, you got Jen, you got to deal with that. And then, freaking Kagura's first means, like, oh, is this Ragnar, man? He ain't, he, ain't, he ain't all that crap. And he still whoops his ass. Like, everyone else just treats him like crap. It softens up over the series because, you know, Rodney becomes, you know, he, you know, becomes a better person for it. But still, like, it just, damn, dude. It sucks the way he's treated, and it's just not fair at all. I swear to God, it's not fair. On top of all the abuse he has to deal with from the people around him, Rodney's successes or treat it more as successes for the villains than actually his own successes. Like, like literally, he overcame literally impossible odds to defeat Terami and Mu, with Mu costing him his arm. But because of that, Terami was able to, Terami and Phantom were able to hijack Takamagahara and infect him with a virus. And the whole time he was able to do that because he was distracted by the battle of Mu 12. Everybody kept saying, oh, there's no way Rod is going to do this. There's no way he's going to beat Terami. And how the hell did he beat Mu? Reverse the idea and engine. Yeah, he did that. Then, like, once he finally able to do all that, he's able to come over um, impossible odds. On top of that, Terami hijacks Takamagahara. Sai is shown to be Izanami. And it's like, pretty much, like, what, what else? What else did Rod going to do? Oh, yeah, freaking, hold on. There's more, like, more. I'm trying to remember right now at the top of my head. It's so good. Like, I know that most of his successes end up helping the antagonist. It's so sad. I'm just saying that the whole Terry and Moose Swell situation was the most egregious one. It was the most in-your-face reason. I mean, in-your-face one. And it's so hilarious. Oh, yeah, on top of that, Rodman is saving Moo. I mean, obviously he's going to do that. But Rodman is saving Moo from Take Mikazuchi. He shows up, sees Izanami. Izanami triggers Rod, the Black Beast, um, triggers, um, New? Yeah, he triggered, she triggers New, stabs Ragna, and then Ragna eventually turns to the, and then, you know, goes nuts and goes to the Black Beast. And it just, it doesn't work for him at all. I swear to God, it does not work for him. I feel, it just doesn't work for him. At all, he, like, the only, his only success that doesn't have, like, some messed up, actually, that's a lie. All success had repercussions because I was gonna say the whole confirmation I'm a confirmation confrontation with Susano and yeah he died. Well he didn't die die but like he was on the verge of dying after he um overloaded the idea engine anyway so yeah there's that yay for Ragna <laughs> going back to Calamity Trigger for a bit Ragna constantly meeting Moo okay he meets Moo they battle he loses Gets stabbed, thrown to the cauldron, become the black beast to destroy the world. Rewind. Over and over and over again until Noel saves him. 
It's freaking ridiculous. Like, if Rodney ever remember, like, mostly remember stuff from the previous timelines, the dude's mental state would have been just gone. The dude's, like, the dude's mind would have just been wiped, like, just, like, just effed up. Constantly dying, being revived, having to go through the same crap again. Dies, constantly revived. Like, it's just, like, a loop. Like, just a loop of nothing. And, like, the dude remembered... His mental state would have been just destroyed. Like, imagine constantly get dying and constantly getting revived. That your 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 like your mentality would not be correct. Luckily, if like if Blaze who ever went in an extremely dark direction and Rodney did remember most of what happened from the previous time loops, hell yeah, that would have been that would have been messed up, dude. The game probably would have ended on Calamity Trigger with Rodney just basically offing himself. That's messed up. That is so messed up. And speaking of new. Speaking of Rodna witnessing deaths, oh, like dealing dealing with deaths over and over again, he saw Lambda die, which I'm not gonna lie, the whole Lambda dying situation with her being new, it it was I, I didn't like because that kind of devalues Lambda's character, whatever little she had in um continuum shift, because you know after she does like oh I'm new, new Rodna was protecting new like I mean, new was protecting Rodna and yeah no. It should have been Lambda alone that should have told Rock and all that. They should have bonded together like they did, like they did in the anime. Like I hate Alter Memory, but at least Alter Memory did that one thing right. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty much it's 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 stupid. <laughs> like I don't like that the fact that that scene pretty much devalued Lambda as a character. I mean, she really didn't have a character, but. She was pretty much a replacement new. I would just didn't want like I didn't want her to just be new, like, oh new it was really because no, that crap got reset by Chrome Phantasma and then Central Fiction. Like that, that made nothing. Like hell, that would have that, that that situation did two things alone. Either devalue Lambda's character or gave character development to new. And none of those things happened come Chrome Phantasma. None of that. Okay, I'm getting off the track here. I'm getting off track. The point is. Rodin's life sucks. He had to get died multiple times. He saw Lambda slash new die again. Whatever. It, it, I'm getting this off the track. I'm moving on. Moving on. Moving on. So everybody hates Terami. We already know that. That is like no. That pretty much is no news to anyone. But because of Terami, Rodna is became a jaded, bitter, angry man when he was introducing Chrome Fanta Um, I'm sorry, Chrome Fanta Calamity Trigger. And Rodna's hatred is so immense. Like, Terry lives off that hatred. He needs that hatred to keep him anchored to the world. And he specifically, Terry basically made, specifically, sorry, specifically made Rodna hate him so much that Terry could just live forever at that point. Like, if Rodna stopped, if Rodna stopped hating him, maybe Terry would have probably been nerfed a bit. Then you got Kokonoe who pissed him off. That Kokonoe had the re. What's, what's the word? Re. Um. Um, remodel her brain to feel less or no hatred towards Terami. And then Terami's like, oh, dude, who the hell does that kind of thing? And then, like, like Ragnar's hatred alone for Terami could just keep him anchored to the world, like, alone. Like, if, like no, if everybody else hated Terami and Ragnar did, did, did that would just be enough. That would just be enough for Terami. He's like, oh, hell yeah, bro. I could live forever because this one dude I've effed up his life and he I could just live forever it's just it's just it's just it's just funny thinking about it though it really is funny to think about moving on to more antagonists yeah Ragnar finding out of uh, that Saya the the his sister that he's been looking for this whole time and wondering where the hell she is was actually now the goddess of death Hades or Mayo freaking Izanami herself and that that that's not good. After a long battle of Terami, finally be able to kick his ass, finally be able to defeat Mu and save Noel at the cost of his arm, then just up and pass. Oh yeah, oh oh ro brother, guess what? It's me, Saya. I'm here, and you know I'm I'm actually the goddess of death who runs the NOL now. And oh yeah, you can't kill me because. I'm pretty much immortal, and if you if you somehow kill me, then you're then Saya dies. Like it's it's it sucks. It really does suck. I mean, granted that didn't actually happen, but 
the point is, it, like, I mean, it did happen. I mean, like, it didn't happen in the sense that Roger was able to kill Saya, but <clears throat> yeah, it, it, he, he did it. Like, it, he saw that and was like, what the hell? What the, f what the, f Ugh. I finally did all this crap. I finally defeated my arch enemy. I finally able to talk to Noel and work somewhat eh, with Jin, and then boom, you give me this. Just pops out of nowhere. It's like, oh yeah. You know what? You've been looking for me this whole time, brother. Oh, now I'm just literally the gods of death. You can't kill me. Ha ha. Nee, 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 nee. Just damn, dude. Like, just imagine that ever happened to you, man. You see your little sister and now she's like some freaking demon and you can't kill her. Like, it's just, it's it's messed up to hell and back. Just god damn. Forgot to mention something about the Saya situation is the fact that Saya, well, Izanami, she starts off Chrome for Tasma hounding Ragna and is basically like she's 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 basically she's basically she's basically hounding Ragna and mentally torturing the guy by using her Saya's love of Ragna against him like and got like it's it's already messed up to begin with and on top of that it's just it's just escalating worse you know like, she's like, oh, well, bro like, brother, you know, this body, this vessel, like, your sister misses you. Come be with me. Be my slave or whatever. <laughs> be mine. And, like, it's just like, well, god damn it. Like, the guy just, like, he's already found out that his sister is now the goddess of death itself. Gotta, gotta make it worse by just, oh, well, you know what? She still loves you. Come get her. You, oh, you can't. You can't get her because you can't kill me. You can't, you can't reverse this. Eh. Yeah. So now Ragna, basically around Selka, he can't use his Asha Grimoire, and he meets up with Jin. Well, he he first meets up with Kyra, who just just completely owns his ass because Ragna's been relying too heavily on the Asha Grimoire, and he meets he fights Jin again. Jin for the first time. Actually, is this the first time he kicked his ass? I feel like this is the first time Jin actually beat Ragnar, and only because Ragnar was handicapped. Because Ragnar always kicked Jin's ass, but like he got his ass kicked by both Kagura and Jin just because he couldn't use his Asher. And since Ragnar's whole, you know, heavy relying on, he's like, oh well, damn. But he has, if you got your okay, Kagura, I can deal with getting your ass whooped by. If you got your ass whooped by Jin, that dude, that that also should do something to your mental state. No, but yeah, Ragnar already had to deal with his own crap about the Azure. Got his ass to stole just over just just done whooped his ass i'm not gonna blame selka for this one she don't know what she's doing rock man is it just got his ass whooped just got his own it's just got his ass toe up just because he couldn't use his ass <laughs> like dude like that that right there is also a messed up moment to me <laughs> you got your ass kicked by jed oh my god so moving on from rock now we go to blood edge and basically he, okay, so he got sent back in time, right? He got sent back in time to be Blood Edge. He lost his memories and hung out with the six heroes for a bit. And what's worse, he had to, he, still, he basically sacrificed himself, right? He had sacrificed himself to halt the Black Beast so that the six heroes had enough time to get all the um, weapons and powers in order to defeat it because, hey, the Black Beast is out of logic. We can't kill it conventionally. So, you know, but Rodney has held up back that Black Beast for a year. Held it back. While everyone else had the time and effort to try to, you know, the six heroes had the time to, you know, get the, you know, get the, what they needed, get the tools they needed to, to kill it. And damn, that's just, like, that's messed up. Like, Rodna can't catch a break no matter what timeline or what person he is. He went back in time, halt the Black Beast, so it just stopped, just halt, make it dormant, so that everyone else had the time to get up to kill it. Freaking, just damn. Had to hold it back, just like, just... Stuck in that thing for a year. <laughs> just gotta deal with that. Just Jesus Christ. Had to deal with that for a solid year. Stuck inside a monster who's literally outside of logic itself. And ain't that something. So heading back to the near the end of Chrome Phantasma. Ragna, for the first time ever, finally defeats Nu, and he finally defeats her without using the Azure Grimoire. And he even saves her from, you know, Take Mikazuchi. Everything's all great. The world's all, you know, Teremi's defeated. Relius is out of commission. Everything's all right. Still got Izanami to worry about because, uh, you know, yeah, that's also a problem. And unfortunately, he like the girl, he fi he finally saved her. And then Izanami shows up, 
gets makes news, stab Ragna, turn into to the turn into Berserk Mode by Izanami. He freaking viciously beat down Jen Noel. And like, well, he was obviously, you know, you know, Ragna, um, he was able to eventually be taken down, but still. On top of that, after all of that, after all he after what after I'm sorry, let me slow down. After he declared he was gonna use the Ash Grimoire to protect others instead of destroy, he was turned berserk by Izanami and had no choice but to destroy everything around him because he was becoming the Black Beast again. And that's just that's messed up. He finally found, you know, what he really like, he finally found his like, you know, what he wanted. Because he's pretty much a misguided man from basically Clemmy Trigger's continuous shift. He didn't know what he wanted. He, really know, like, he knew what he wanted to do, but that revenge wasn't going to help him. You're getting revenge on Terami, and like he even discovered all that during the fight with Asriel. Like, all that crap wasn't going to fulfill him. He, was, he wasn't going to feel better from that. And then, you know, he decided, hey, you know, I'm going to protect you know, the those I care about. Well, guess what? Freaking set off to destroy the people you care about. By Izanami, the one person that you've been looking for for years, and now you find her. Now she's just evil. Great. That's that's great. Great. You know, I'm glad. That, I'm, apparently, that's good to happen. N M M Mori, I hate your ass. You know what? I hate you, Mori. I hate you so damn much. And even after all that crap, after Chrome Phantasma, Chrome Phantasma Extend comes out to reveal. Oh yeah, uh, you know, Rodden's all right. Too bad he lost his freaking memories. He lo like on top of all the crap he went through. He doesn't have his memories anymore. I mean, Grant, you can you can say that for most of the characters um, in the Star Essential Fiction because you know they, they, that's the whole point. But he lost his memories. Great, that's, just, that's fantastic. The, the, the man doesn't know who he is, but he still has a lingering feeling of oh yeah, I still need to protect New. No, I still need to get the easy way. All that all that good crap. No, it's not good crap. Like why? Like, if Rodney was beaten down, severely injured, and, you know, I, I could have dealt with that. At least he would have known what to do, but no. It took him three arcade acts just to figure out, oh, what the hell? Like, you, I mean, you can, you basically could call that... I can't... I don't, I, don't, I don't think I even call that... Uh, what's the word? I don't know if I even call that, um... Uh... What's the word? Um... Ah, uh, damn, what's the word? It's like you try to, um, extend something for a long period of time. Unnecessarily. I'm, I'm, I keep saying pandering. That's not the word. It's already peed up. Uh, I know what it is. Damn. What is it? What is it? What is it? It could be seen as um. Damn. I can't even figure the word right now. I know the word. It's like you extend something for a long period of time unnecessarily. Like stories basically like just like extend like a certain a certain scene or something, but. Like it extends to a certain scene, and they extend it for way too long. And like, damn, I know what it is. I can't think of it. Damn. Oh well. The, anyway, the point is, you could call it just extending, you know, Rodney's amnesia just to make the three arcade acts. Because hell, if Rodney got like, did again, like, Rodney got his memories back in Act Two. Everyone did, but like, the Act One could be literally just sliced out because I mean, it really. <laughs> but the point is, yeah, he lost his memories. He lost his memories, and you know he has to deal with that, which is garbage, poo poo garbage, and I hate it. Another thing I forgot to mention in the very beginning of the um, near the beginning, where I was talking about um, how Ragnar had to deal with um, the whole Azure, doing sorry my um, the whole Azure situation um, when he got older. Like think about like his whole life from the very beginning just like sucked. Cause like I forgot to mention about how the church uh, got burnt down. I forgot the fact that Terry also killed the sister. I forgot that okay, Rodney basically lost his home. He lost his family. He doesn't really know where he's come from. And on top of that, at a very young age, he's basically He's pretty much just in, he's pretty much just like yeah, outfitted with a with a, a demonic arm that kills him, like eats his, like eats him away from the inside, and on top of that can turn him into the black beast. I could like I mean, I think I mentioned a little bit of snippets of it, but I completely Missed the. F I forgot to mention that the whole church and the sister got killed or something like that. I always, always forget that. It's, it's an important part of his um, backstory. I just always manage to forget it because it, it always slips my mind every time I think about Ro 
Every time I think about it, it always slips my mind. Oh, yeah, sure. he lost his home. He lost his caretaker. He lost his siblings. He, he pretty much nearly lost the will to live. And he was all, he was already dying until Rachel came there. Like, if, like that, that's a messed up way to start a thing. Yeah, lost his home, lost his family. That's the deal. Like, and on top of that, he constantly gets trolled by Hosma and Ter uh, Hosma and Teremy. Basically, like, like, damn, like, shoot, getting trolled by them, Wario may want to off myself. Shoot, no, think about it. <laughs> Going back to Easy Na Easy Nami. <laughs> Going back to Izanami again. He he meets her again, and um, you know, I think it was it was Act Two, I think. Yeah, it was Act Two, and he was goaded on by her. It's like, oh, hit me, strike me. And Rodney was like, okay, F it. I'm going to strike you. And then once he did, you know, he was already distraught doing it. And then basically she reveals, oh, she's not able to die. And if she would die, freaking Sai would die. I already mentioned this before, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this in the order of the crap I remember it in. And I'm trying to start from the beginning of the series until like near the end. So, yeah. But anyway, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rodney hit me. Come on, strike me down. I was like, oh, well, you can't now. I'm, I'm, like, you can't kill me, fool. Like he can't he can't release Saya from the sweet release of death because technically she's death itself. So you know you can't kind of you can't kill what's already you can't kill death unless you throw life on it, which Rachel said. You know you throw some life on it, boom, there you go. You you will bring death back to life. I I I, I don't know how that works. I wouldn't know how to describe that to someone. <laughs> So yeah, um, constantly dealing with Rodney has to um, has to deal with the people who hate him. Yeah, uh, nine. He has to deal with nine's hatred, and nine is a very angry woman. But here's the thing: she Rodney is basically the only person, one of the very few people in the entire series, to understand his suffering. Like nine can understand Rodney's suffering. Like if they actually. You know, had the ability to calm down, you know, reassess the situation. Ragna and Nine could have literally they were they, they could basically relate to each other's suffering. Because like they, they, they had they had to deal with a lot of suffering in, in their past. And on top of that, the one of the very few people Rodney could actually relate to, he had to kill. Well, not he didn't necessarily kill killer, but he had to take her down. Because they, they, they had to deal with their differences in how to deal with the Amaterasu situation. Like Really, the, one of the very few people Rodney could actually truly relate to and get an understanding with, he had to take down. Like literally, Rodney and Nine could have like literally, like like if this was a different situation, and Nine wasn't the way she was. They could have been least friends who can understand each other on a more emotional and fundamental level. But no, uh, you had to deal with that because you know Nine's kind of went nuts, and you know she had to like you know effort. We're gonna, I'm gonna kill Amaterasu and replace it with this god I made behind me, but no, Rodna couldn't have that, so they had to fight each other, and it's sad, though, really. One of the very few people who can actually understand Rodna and actually, you know, de de like understand his pain and suffering had to be taken out. Ain't that something? That, that's, just, that's just, that's messed up. That's messed up. And, and speaking of all the people he had the take down per se because he he had he had to go he had to go against everyone in the cast really he had to steal their dreams and desires he wasn't one of the entitled or qualified you know you depending on the translation and he had to basically embrace his role as the grim reaper and including he had to include including the allies he had to he made in chrome fantastic and his own siblings he had to go against all of them it's like you know what Effort. Everyone else has put all their selfish desires on the world, and they want to change the world. But they're only changing. They're only changing the world in their course, like you know what they want. And it's extremely selfish. Rod is like, "Eff it, nah, you can't have that. The world's not gonna move on unless you guys move on. And having the world changed in your image, technically, it, it ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. I re I refuse for it to happen. So he's going out." Using his Azure to steal the dreams and desires. And yeah, pretty much everyone is an enemy to Rodna now. Like even after the even okay. Calamity trigger, enemies. Chrome, continuous shift slowly growing, but you know, enemies towards Rodna. Grown Fantasm, he's starting to get along with more people. Back to Central Fiction enemies again. Because, I mean, he, he can't he can't let them do it. No one's gonna change. The world isn't gonna change. Everyone's not gonna change. Unless he has to steal their dreams and desires. And effectively protect the world in a way. 
And, and like, just god damn it. Like, the one good thing happens to Rodney and Lily, another thing, bad things happens. And it's just, it's, 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 it's just, it's just depressing. If all that bad crap wasn't enough for Ragnar, he is, in fact, the central fiction. He is the dream of Amaterasu. And because he exists, the world suffers as a result. God, well, Amaterasu in this case, God only has eyes on him. It doesn't care about the rest of the world. If, it, if Amaterasu cared about the rest of the world, it wouldn't be rewinding so many damn often. So basically, everything wrong with the world as in the current state leads back to Ragna himself. He is the central fiction. He is the hero in the story of the world. He had no choice in over this. Ragna even says all this stuff in Crawford. That's like, yeah, I don't have a choice in this. Like the whole theme of Blaze was basically about rebellion and get versus order. Ragna was supposed to be the rebel. And despite all that, the person who rebelled the most was actually forced into the wheel of fate, as were, as you as you were to say in the game. You know, wheel of fate is turning. Yeah. The man who rebelled the most is actually the one thrown to fate itself. <laughs> and, you know, literally everything, like, really is basically just straight up says, like, yeah, we can't move. Like, we're basically stuck on a finite space. This is suffering. And because of that, it's, it gets traced back to Ragnar. Ragnar dies, Saya, re Saya, Amaterasu, whatever, rewinds time and basically reverses it back to the beginning. And it's because of Ragnar himself. Rodney can't die. He's the dreamer of Amaterasu. He can't die, so time keeps relooping on itself. And no one likes these time loops. Tear me sick of all the villains are sick of it. Everyone's sick of it. It's just just because Rodney exists. Just because he exists. His own existence is a hindrance to the world at large. Not only that Rodney was already a criminal and everyone pretty much mostly around the world already hate him. His very existence is a problem. His own... Him living is a problem. And because he exists, guess what? Ragnar had to basically wipe out his own existence to save the entire world, all possibilities, and yada, yada, yada. And the sad thing is about it, he said, Ragnar, like, he need like, the one thing that went through over the series is that Ragnar needed peace, man. He needed peace and quiet. The man just needed to relax for once in his life. And he never found that peace he desperately needed. He may be with Amaterasu now, but the man will never truly be at peace. He didn't want everyone else to suffer for what he, for what he has done. So that's why he went around and wiped everyone's memories of it using Amaterasu. He didn't want his siblings to miss him either, even though he was finally able to get back with them near the end of Central Fiction. Like, he had to wipe their memories. They're literally, the probably the only person that probably even remembers Ragnar is Am uh, Amane, probably. Rachel does hardly remembers him. No one remembers him. He never got the peace he needed. He had the, the world got a happy ending in the end, but they never knew, like, no one ever knew what happened to the man who did it. You know? He suffered, he struggled, and he eventually vanished from everyone's existence and memories. He never found peace. He never got back with his siblings proper. He never... Rodnev never lived a life that he wanted to live. He was basically just thrown around by the universe itself. He, he never... He never got the chance to actually enjoy his life. Like, most of everyone in Blaze Blue never did, but... Rodnev's the worst. Hell, you can even say Teremy enjoyed his life to a certain extent. He's the main villain. <laughs> you can say even Susano did for just a little bit, but Ragnar... Ragnar never did. A man who had to deal with constant hounding, people out for his blood, a weapon that was killing him from the inside out, with the very potential of him becoming the beast to destroy the world, dealing with his rabid siblings... Dealing with the fact that his one of his siblings became the gods of death who ruined his life. Well, I mean, not ruined his life, but his life was ruined from the start. Like, Rodney, from the beginning of his life to the very end, is a story of tragedy, man. Like, this is why I implore people. Like, some people may not like the story of Blaze Blue. Yes, it's, it's incredibly convoluted. It's not bad. It's just 
all over the place, you know? But even if you never took anything from the story, I at least want you to, like, learn and think about Rodna's journey, you know? Rodna's journey was a long one, and it's sad that when you're deaf, your very existence being wiped out, like, you can find, like, he never found peace in a way. I mean, he may not even, he may not even be peaceful now. He finally went back, to, he finally found Saya. You know, he finally found her. But even now, he, he can't live the way he wanted to. Like, he, he just couldn't. It's incredibly depressing when you think about it. It really is depressing. All that, all that suffering. And it, it literally, amount, like, it, it saved the world and all that junk, but he could never do it. He, he can, he can never live. No, it's, it's, it's ambiguous where Ragnar is now. He could be dead. He could be inside Amaterasu. He could be God now. But the point is, he's not... Who knows? Who knows where he is and how he's feeling now, but the point is just... This is a story of just suffering from beginning to end. And this is why... This is, I really... I was going to do like more of a jokes um, video about this in the beginning, but... I started to get all emotional and crap as it went on, and I started to think why Ragna became one of my favorite protagonists in any kind of medium. The man just suffers for situations out of, like, for stuff out of his situation. He, he, there's nothing he could have done about this, and, it, and, like, he did do something about it, but, like, in a way, all this is technically was destined, to be honest. The man who, he couldn't rebel forever. The Wheel of Fate is turning. Yeah, that pretty much applies to Rodney and Ro nearly Rodna himself. The Wheel of Fate just keeps on moving. And while Ragna, you know, he decided himself he's going to take the, 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 the desires of everyone else, that was the only logical conclusion for him. I mean, if he didn't do that, nothing could, no, the world could have never moved on. The world could never change. It would have been an endless loop of just eh. Just damn. Just thinking about it kills me. It really does. Well, Ragnar, all I gotta say is this, man. You may be a fictional character, but your, your suffering is your suffering is real. <laughs> to me at least. And to everyone who else likes you. See you later, old rags. You really made a series worth it.